Good evening. evening. And may the Lord be with you. you. Welcome to God's house on this Lent for Wednesday night service. And we are continuing our theme of the sounds of the passion. And as you can see on your bulletin there, it is about tramping feet. And that, of course, probably refers to the soldiers that marched Jesus from one place to another and eventually to the hill where they crucified him. And we'll hear a lot more about that tonight in my message to you. So let us begin then with our preparation. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe that I am a sinner. How do you know this? Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved from God because of your sin? His wrath and his pleasure, and death, Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. Let us then worship him together. Please stand. We begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may receive peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Christ, and in him we are forgiven. As an ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be unto you.
Lord Jesus, you watched as a large crowd approached you in the darkness. You knew their intentions, and yet you did not run away. Grant us boldness through the power of your Holy Spirit that we might stand and be faithful to you at all times. For you live and reign with the Father and Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is Psalm 28, 1 to 9. We place our trust not in men, but in God alone. To you I call, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call for you, to you for help, as I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbors, but harbor malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back upon them what they deserve. Since they show no regard for the works of the Lord and what his hands have done, he will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people, bless our inheritance, be their shepherd, and carry them forever. This is the word of the Lord. We give thanks to God, for he forgives those who trust in him and rightly judges those who trust in themselves. And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as, as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. For you, brothers, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own countrymen the same things those churches suffered from the Jews, who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displease God, are hostile to all men, in their efforts to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. In this way, they always heap upon their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus showed mercy and compassion even as others were seeking evil against him. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus followers saw what was going to happen. They said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him, am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts. And you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated as we sing together the hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as you have gathered us here this evening to worship you, to be aware of our sinful nature, to know what you have done for us, that you have died and rose again for our forgiveness. By your power now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, open up our hearts to your word so that we might increase our faith and have confidence in all your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I attended the graduation of, uh, for my son's graduation from Marine Boot Camp, one of the most impressive parts of the ceremony was seeing the absolute precision marching of the 450 young men who were graduating that day. The sound of their feet striking the pavement in perfect unison sent shivers up and down my back. They marched as if they were all connected together as when one foot stepped in front of the other. Just hearing the sound of their feet marching toward us sent a message of purpose and determination. The heavy footfalls in tight precision, the rhythm of the feet marching in proper cadence would certainly bring fear to anyone who would attempt to stand against them. Well, throughout the passion of our Lord Jesus, the precision marching and tramping of soldiers' feet is heard again and again as Jesus is shuttled from one place to another. There are guards, armies, sentries, centurions taking our Lord from Gethsemane to trial, from Caiaphas to Pilate, and from judgment to the cross. We hear, we first hear the sound of armed men marching on Thursday night at the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus had just finished his time of personal prayer, seeking strength for what he knew was about to come. He awakened his disciples with the news that his betrayer was at hand. And right on cue, the sound of marching men stopped outside the garden gate and Jesus went out to meet them. At the front of the crowd was Judas. But with him were the temple guard and the detachment of Roman soldiers. Dead of night or not, the priests weren't taking any chances of Jesus' arrest causing a riot among the people. Anyone wanting to raise a protest would have to face the end of a Roman spear. Well, Jesus faced the armed crowd with courage and conviction. He asked them, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. Then Jesus said, But the scriptures must be fulfilled. The arrival of soldiers, the timed precision of their feet marching in perfect order, that wasn't a random event. The soldiers... The misguided priests, the angry crowd were all part of the events that had to take place so that God's plan of salvation could be accomplished. Jesus knew what the armed contingent meant. Oh, it meant a gruesome trip to the cross. The soldiers were coming to take him before the high priest in the court that had already decided his guilt. Then they went to Pilate for sentencing, uh, for sentencings, and then to the cross. Scripture had to be fulfilled. God's Son had to die for our sin. The involvement of the marching army was part of this process. Then Jesus said, but this is your hour when darkness reigns. Jesus saw the, the detachment of the shoulders for what it really was. It was a group of men who were actually part of the army of darkness. And they had one purpose, and that was to arrest and subdue Jesus that very night. 
Satan had entered into Judas and his dark power was guiding the crowd. And this was the time when darkness would be in total control. They would pour out their hatred of God and his son and nail Jesus to the cross once and for all. Well, Jesus offered no resistance and he went with them. They marched down the mountainside into the city of Jerusalem and Jesus was brought into the council uh, council chambers. And then the trial proceeded as planned. Even though they could not get their story straight, they were still able to quickly arrive at the intended verdict. Guilty as charged. Even those bringing the charges knew that they didn't have anything of substance, but but Jesus didn't resist. Jesus allowed their evil hearts to accomplish the intended goal. Jesus was found guilty. That was the only thing that they really cared about. Then the guards took Jesus back outside and brought him to Pilate's judgment hall where they placed Jesus back in the control of the Roman army. The soldiers remained outside as Jesus was tried before Pilate. After much shouting and bargaining with the crowd, Pilate handed the sentence down. Jesus would die by crucifixion. Then Jesus was marched back to the barracks, and then that strict discipline that held the soldiers together as they marched, it disintegrated, and then they began acting like barbarians. They blindfolded Jesus and struck him in his face, daring him to tell who had hit him. They dressed Jesus in an ornate robe, placed a crown of thorns on his head, and gave him a stick to use as a scepter. They mocked him, and they bowed down to him, and they cried out loud, Hail, King of the Jews! Then they took the stick from his hand, and they hit him in the face. They slapped him across the face and knocked him to the ground. Heavy boots that had earlier marched in unison now ruthlessly kicked Jesus, bruising him and causing his blood to flow freely from his wounds. Then the command came. Get the prisoner and march him to the place of execution. So they got Jesus on his feet and made him carry the cross on his back. They led him through the city to that hated place on the hill. Assembling in formation with Jesus struggling before them, the soldiers marched out. But Jesus wasn't able to keep pace with the soldiers, and he stumbled and fell. The lack of sleep, the loss of blood, the pain from the severe beatings, and the weight of the cross all conspired against him. Jesus just didn't have the strength to take another step. The centurion in charge of the procession became irritated, and he pushed aside the crowd. He takes his sword in his hand, and he cuts the ropes that bind Jesus to the cross. And Jesus lays on the ground, beaten, bleeding, and exhausted, trying to regain his strength. The centurion scans the crowd and he sees an able-bodied man and forces him into the street and he motions for that man to finish carrying the cross to the, to the place of execution. The detachment of soldiers once again marches on in unison to Golgotha, the place of the skull. The soldiers arrive at their appointed station and now they know what to do because they've all performed this evil task many times before with grotesque efficiency. Now they take Jesus and they crucify him. As they nail Jesus to the cross, a word comes from his lips, a word that surprises all who hear it. There's no cry for vengeance, no word for the soul, no no hatred for the soldiers who nailed him there. It was simply a word of grace. 
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. What a powerful word of compassion. Jesus called upon the Father to forgive them. Jesus' death earned forgiveness for everyone who calls upon his name. Even for the soldiers whose tramping feet had taken him to his death. Jesus willingly offers forgiveness even to the one who nailed him to the cross. You know, Jesus died for all people, no matter how terrible their sin may have been. Jesus took him, took with him, our sins and the sins of those who marched him to the place of death. And through his death, he forgives the sin of everyone who repents. Well, scripture had to be fulfilled. Someone had to end the power that death and sin holds over mankind. There was only one possibility, the one promised by God, and that was his son, Jesus Christ. The march that Jesus took for us brought him from heaven to Bethlehem to Jerusalem, and then it ended at the cross. Not in tragedy, but in glorious fulfillment of God's promise. For it was at the cross that Jesus willingly gave up his life for all people, for you and for me, so that all who believe in him as their Savior will unconditionally receive God's grace and forgiveness. Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross so that, grace, so that the grace of God could be shared throughout the world. And then the burden of sin lifted from the hearts of those who would believe in him. But the sinful nature of mankind naturally resists God's word, and our feet go tramping off as we attempt to go our own way and follow our own path. We are defiantly determined to march to the beat of a different drummer, the drummer of this world who intends to harm us and to pull us away from God's love. Sin closes our ears so that all we hear is the sound of sin tramping through our lives. The sound is loud, rhythmic, and enticing because there are so many others that are marching to its evil tune. But the cadence of sin is the cadence of death and destruction. If we are in step with the world, then we are out of step with God. Marching along the path of righteousness is a much softer sound. Through his death on the cross, Jesus set us free from sin and we are no longer have to follow that well-worn path of sinful living. Out of his deep love for us, he gives us the power to believe and for all who have faith, he grants unconditional forgiveness. Hearing the word brings faith. Faith brings repentance. Repentance brings forgiveness. And forgiveness brings eternal life in heaven. Jesus' sacrifice brings us into step with God and he bids us to march with him. Jesus calls out to us and says, if anyone would come after me, he must take up his cross and follow me. Our faith in Jesus gives us a new direction and a new life. If we listen, we can clearly hear the sound of tramping feet marching in perfect unison. This time, the sound of God's people walking in the way of Jesus. We are his soldiers, Christian soldiers, marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Amen. Let us now stand.
as we confess our faith through the words of the meaning of the second article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. Please be seated as we receive the offering of our Lord. In our prayers this evening, we offer up this prayer from Hank and Sue Ann Rosing. And the prayers are for their son, Brian, who was injured on the job in Alaska. And we pray for his safety and for his healing. Let us stand for prayer. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for each according to their needs. O oh Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, we pray for our congregation, O Lord, bless all who worship here and grant them to see your guiding hand in their lives, sustain them when they are weak, strengthen them for their daily tasks of life and assure them of your love and forgiveness in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are sick, especially for Brian, and in, and in need of healing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us and our loved ones during the times of illness. We pray that you would continue to sustain and guide the recovery of all who are in need. Bless the doctors, nurses, and the medical staff who attend those who are sick and recovering. Bless and guide their work that through them you, your will may be done. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who have strayed from our Lord and his church. Almighty, merciful, and most gracious God and Father, we earnestly implore you to turn the hearts of all who have forsaken the faith once delivered to your church. Those who have wandered from it or are in doubt or temptation through the corruption of your truth, mercifully visit them and turn them again that in singleness of heart they may take pleasure in your word and be made wise to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, 
We pray for the church. Jesus, you are the Lord of the church. Bless our church and every Christian church throughout the world that she may hold forth the true gospel with boldness and faithfulness. Even as a light shines into the darkness, let the gospel shine forth that all your people may be united in the truth. Lord, in your mercy. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the Passion reading. Passion reading part three, the palace of the high priest. Those who had arrested Jesus brought him to the high priest's house where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter followed him afar off and so did another disciple. That disciple was known to the high priest and went in with Jesus to the palace of the high priest, but Peter stood outside the door so that the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the doorkeeper and brought Peter in. He went in and sat with the servants to see the end. He was warming himself at the fire they had kindled in the middle of the courtyard. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the whole council were seeking evidence that might make the case for a death sentence, but they could not find any. Many bore false witness against him but their statements did not agree. Two stepped forward and said, we heard him say, I shall destroy this temple made with hands, and after the beginning of the third day, I shall build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their evidence did not agree. Then the high priest stood up and moved to the center and put this question to Jesus. Do you have no answer? What is this evidence they have given against you? But he was silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest put a question to him and said, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of God's power and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his garments and said, Do we still need any witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your opinion? They all declared that he was liable for death. Then some some of them began to spit on him. They blindfolded him, struck him, and said to him, Prophesy to us, O Christ, who is he that struck you? The guards beat him as they took him away. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maidservants of the high priest came and saw Peter warming himself. She looked at him closely as he sat in the light of the fire and said, You also were along with the man from Nazareth, that Jesus. Peter denied it and said, I do not know what you mean. He went out to the forecourt. Another maidservant saw him there and said to those who were standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Peter denied it again with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, those standing around Peter, around said to Peter, surely you, surely you are one of them. You are a Galilean. Your accent gives you away. Peter took an oath, calling down a curse upon himself. I do not know the man. And immediately while he was still speaking, the cock crowed a second time. And the Lord turned and looked on Peter. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Peter broke down and went out and wept bitterly. As soon as as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes held a court session with all the Sanhedrin. 
Then they bound him, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate. Then Judas, who had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, was sorry, and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priest and elder, saying, I have sinned, I have betrayed innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? That is your affair. Judas threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed. He went and hanged himself. The chief priest took the pieces, silver pieces and said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. They took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. That is why to this day that field has been called the field of blood. In this way was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by the children of Israel, and gave them for the potter's field. Here ends the Passion reading. Let us pray. Almighty God, because you know that we are of ourselves have no strength, keep us both outwardly and inwardly that we might that we may be defended from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace and serve the Lord.